friends, welcome to another episode of Makamba Life. In the words of famed French scientist Marie Curie, I say to you, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. My guest today is Mr. George Becker. Hi, George. Hi. Welcome. Hi, A young entrepreneur who hails from Nigeria, but you, are, you work in Africa uh, worldwide, you know, yes. don't you? Yes. Very good. Tell us about yourself, George. <laughs> Where did you begin this business of uh, entertainment? Um, wow, well, I don't know where to start, though. Where you start? You, you, can, <laughs> you can start from, you can start like me. I started off as a, as a radio announcer, as a DJ. You can start from there. Yeah, I started, as a, I started from childhood, so it's, it's been there, so that's why I just feel like, where do I start? Um, I'm a creative, so anything that has to do with creativity, you know, gets my attention. So I started, um, I started, I started offering services of solution, you know, that try to make things, you know, better, you know, make things, you know. So that took me into studying IT, you know, to bring IT solutions. Where? In Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, an institution called, um, it's NIIT. Mm -hmm. So I studied software development, computer programming, uh, web development, and a couple of um, IT stuff, you know. So I used that to, to, uh, to offer solutions to people who had, you know, issues with computers, with uh, IT related, you know, software, networking and all of that. So that was my first company, which was Showtech Tech, I pioneered and I started running that before I moved to the other side of, uh, yeah, of my interest. I understand you have a, a Bachelor of Arts in Audio Business uh, Communication, um, did this straight did this come straight after high school? Uh, no, no, no. After high school, I um, I didn't go to the university in Nigeria because I didn't I didn't feel like it was right for me because the standard of what I wanted wasn't what they were offering as of then, you know. So I instead of me just going through university like every other person, you know, and just come out and don't even know what's up, you know. I needed something that could actually add to the talent that I had to be able to uh, give me the confidence to explore more things, you know. So what I did, I I used that time to try at some stuff, you know, myself and um, some work, you know, did a lot of work here and there. And then that's when I got into the, I went into the um, IT school to go study. That, you know, in South Africa? No, 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 in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Yes. Mm -hmm. So after studying that, that gave me a boost that I used to start the IT company. I was offering services and then uh, and then I was invited to a radio station. And it was the first digital radio station. In which stage, in which uh, town? It was uh, in uh, River State of Nigeria. Was, so it was the station confined to River State or it was nationwide? It, it wasn't nationwide. It was it was confined to the territory because in Nigeria the stations are all, you know, territorized. You can't broadcast beyond your territory, you know. So when it comes to a national radio, those radios link up to that national radio. So when they make an announcement about something that's from the federal capital, you know. So I I work there as the programmer. I um, program all the music scheduled you know, do some production, jingles and all of that for the station. And um, yeah, while I was there, I, you know, caught the interest for uh, uh, quality when it comes to music, because a lot of the artists bring their music to me and my mind was open to listen to every kind of music. So I was exposed to so much music that I was able to pick up what the music should sound like and you know because I put in the music for the rotation so I needed to have that taste to say okay this music is good enough to be on high rotation to be played this there to be rejected and all of that so from there I got um, 
I got a request from a, a couple of artists, you know, for me to manage them because since I give them feedback about their music, they're like, why don't you come and manage me so you can help me, guide me through how I make my music so it can be up to like radio standard, you know. So I did a couple of artist management, you know, and then from there I moved into, um, into uh, music video productions. Music video productions. You're watching Makamba Life. When we come back, the creation of George Beck, Geo Beck Entertainment. <laughs> Welcome back to Makamba Life. Now, Geo Beck Entertainment is obviously named after your names. Yes. How many divisions does it uh, have? So it has entertainment. Entertainment is, um, we, we use entertainment to service uh, various artists when it comes to management, PR, you know, distribution, you know, um, doing events, um, a couple of services around entertainment. And then we have the record label. So we, we have artists which we produce their music and, you know, they own our label. We develop their talent. And as well, it has a publishing side. The publishing side looks after the artists um, royalties, you know, making sure the artists get opportunities to get placements, sync, and um, for commercials, and you know, also getting royalties for their music. And as well, it has um, the film production side, which is the Jobek Films. So we do our music videos and production and generating content for the artists' development, and yes. Could you tell us? Uh, some of the artists that are contracted to your level? Um, we only have um, one artist right now on our record label. His name is Lelizi. He's now the biggest hip hop artist from Mozambique. And then now uh, we have El Puto, which is an artist slash a producer. So that's for Jobek. So when it comes to the entertainment side, we service artists like Bonaboy in South Africa. Um, Ron Town, you know, um, um, Shay Shay. Um, Have you had the opportunity to work with uh, any of the producers or artists from Nollywood? Mm, like yes. scoring, uh, you know, theme music and uh, etc. etc. Anything music related? Okay, f um, Nollywood. What I do for them is uh, some of the producers, I, I do like a line producing for them. A line producer is somebody who organizes everything for somebody coming from overseas to come work here. So I get them all the production stuff they need, equipment, crew, location and everything. So they come and do their stuff. You know, I get paid for their service. Um, so in terms of uh, music, we do most of we do most of uh, the music for commercials. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the music in commercials. Uh, you, mean, yeah. you mean for advertising? Yes, purposes. advertising, yeah. Those are called jingles. <laughs> no, 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 not jingles. Mm. Like the commercials you watch on TV, mm. the music behind it, mm. and the music in the commercial. Mm. What in the do? background. Yeah. But you don't do jingles. No, no. Because if, if you do, if you score musicals, you should also be able to do jingles. Yeah, we can do jingles mm. if, if we get a request. Okay. You know, we we're creative, so we can do anything. You know. Mm. So um, how fast do you work? If I say to you right now, I just want to see. I want to test how quick your mind is. Do a jingle for Makamba. Are you are you are you saying I should do a jingle right, right now? now? Yes. I've got the songwriters who come up with the concept <laughs> of the jingles, you understand? I've got a producer, I've got okay. everybody, you okay, understand? Okay, so, okay, so, okay. so it's not a kind of jingle. I'm, okay. not, I'm, not a, I'm not a radio person. You are not a composer? Yes, okay. I'm not a composer. You are the businessman behind yeah, the all these well. artists. Yes, I you bring, bring them, them together. together. And, okay, and, and, yeah. Because as you know, there are, are also other businessmen who are also artists. So mm -hmm. they do the scoring themselves, they sing, they do the arrangement, they do the composition. So yeah. it's just I, dif different ty talent. I do sing, I do sing, mm -hmm. I do most of that, but at a point in my life I realized that, you know, if I would have to go bigger, I need to be behind the scene. So mm -hmm. that's when I withdrew everything. So now an artist will be singing, doing this stuff, I can tell him that this stuff is not happening. Mm -hmm. And I can give them an idea of how it should happen. Okay. 
Yes. Which way should Africa go when we come back? We'll hear more from George on Makamba Life. Africa. The pirating is very big. Um, there are people, I'm sure, musicians or performers who are just excited to hear their work being played on radio yeah. or uh, <clears throat> a video, you know, being shown on TV. Mm -hmm. And this may go on for a couple of years before they realize that this is the actual business of music. They need to get paid for the composition, they need to get paid for the performance, etc., etc. Okay? Yeah. Do you have an association of African composers? Do you have copyright? I know copyright governs the world, but are they African bodies? Are they regional bodies which you use to reinforce this protection of um, uh, composers and performers? Um, South Africa has SAMRO. SAMRO is a South African royalty organization. In Nigeria? Uh, Nigeria, yes. We do have one, but it's not as effective as, as South Africa. You know, so most of my composers are signed to SAMRO. And someone looks after their rights all over the world. So, and you can't be a member of two organizations. So, rather choose the most effective one in the continent if you're an African. You understand? So, um, yeah. how much? How much? How much um, do ministers of uh, of uh, arts, um, you know, and performance uh, get involved uh, in? How helpful are they? in trying to make sure that uh, you know artists are protected and organizers in such a some role, uh, you know reaching out to um, the remote area say of uh, you know south africa if you are to say south africa uh, some role operates in south africa H how much of that is going on um i think there's there's not much involvement from the government you know, mm. it's the it's the organization. It's a non government organization. So they run, you know, on trying to protect artists' rights and, you know, give artists what is due them. You know. So, um, as I said, the one in Nigeria is not, you know is effective. It's not structured properly. So you don't see a role for government at all? Um the role for government would be to 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 be able to um, to investigate why it's not functioning as it should be, and be able to send delegates to maybe to Samro to to maybe take a, 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 a workshop or whatever you know to see how they can be able to emulate that because Nigeria has a capacity to um, to have a standard like Samro, you know so. I think yes. that might have been, you know, initiated and didn't come through, as you know. It might just be corruption to stop it on the way. How long do you think um, it will take, George, for our people, uh, African people, to realize that entertainment is just as serious business as oil, as, as agriculture, as manufacturing of cars, you know, and, and so on and so on. But how long is it going to take? Because we talk of government ministers. Mm -hmm. if, if there was that realization and acceptance, mm -hmm. okay, like the attention they pay to, say, the car manufacturing sector, mm -hmm. the gold mining sector, okay, their involvement will be much, you know, hyped up. Yeah. How long do you think it's going to take and what needs to be done? Is it for the artists or for the government? No, for the artists. For the artists, for, for, for every, realize. for every, no, 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 for, for us, as African people, mm. okay. I tell you what, when I was on radio, I used to meet people and they say, "When are you going to get a real job?" Okay. Mm. Then one day, the next person will ask it me. I said, "Okay, what is a real job?" He says, "You could be a lecturer, you could be a teacher, you could be a doctor." I said, "How much do they earn?" They mentioned the figure. I showed him my pay slip. And it was three times more than what a university lecturer was lecturing. Mm -hmm. I mean, was getting. Yeah. They say what? I said yes. I have a real job. Do you understand? Yeah. Some of these boys who are rappers and the girls, you know, who are singers, make much more money, or are supposed to, if it's being collected, okay, than the professions. So I'm gonna. Okay. Why is it 
he not wearing a suit? If you're not mm. wearing a tie, uh, what is he working? Mm. Ah, this music thing is rubbish. In the meantime, <laughs> somebody is cleaning out. And <laughs> exactly, and exactly. Yeah. Uh, entertainment is, is, is a very serious business, and it's a uh, it's a business that it's sometimes you can just get beyond what you can make beyond what you even anticipate. You can just open up your email one day and they, 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 somebody has requested that they need your actors for this, for that, they want to do this, they want to do that. And for example, let's say you sign an artist and, um, and you invest, let's say, 100,000 rand for shooting the video to promote the artist and you, the artist is still coming up and getting popular and you invest again. Let's say you invest 300,000 rand. Yes. Do you know that because of his popularity and his relevance, you know, a brand could actually approach you and say they would like to endorse the artist and they can offer you as, 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 let's say from $100,000, you know, to three to $500,000 for an endorsement. You've recovered everything that you've invested. Mm. Then also, um, there's other avenues you can make money. And um, the part of people not seeing it as business, you know, like, you know, seeing it as fun. It's all about go to club, pop champagne, you know, chill with all the beautiful girls and all of that, you know. There is, that is just the, it's, it's called entertainment. It's, it's a time for you to come and, like, entertain yourself, you understand. But you are there having all the good time, right? But the artists who came that night to come perform. Is also drinking even more bottles than you, and is going home with some money. You see, we're in the same club, having a good time, but somebody is going home with some serious money. You understand? Yes. So that's because they've put in the work, and because people value their work and value their brand as an artist. We are talking to George Becke of Geo Beck Entertainment on Makamba Life. George, uh, the so we have musicians, we have boxers, we have soccer players, um, <clears throat> we have uh, actors. We have actors. Yeah. Okay. I see recently there's been a lot of collaboration. You know, talking about Nollywood mm. between American, mainly African American actors, and Nigerian, you know, actors, mm -hmm. um, because Nollywood. You know, it's quite uh, gets a lot of publicity, yes. and the you know the producers and the actors do move around. Yeah. Okay, how much collaboration do you have in the music industry per se between African artists, country to country? There's a lot of collaboration, and uh, I'm glad to say that I started one of the collaboration that went mainstream um, between uh, between Nigeria and South Africa. So that was um, with uh, Mafiki Zulu and a Nigerian artist called Midi. And as well, um, you know, so that opened the door, you know, to like get on the mainstream high rotation, like on your face, you know. Then Mafiki Zulu and Davido, you know, and then uh, DJ Maporisa, you know, with Whiskey, you know. Um, so collaboration just goes on. You're not involved on. with this Babuan artist as well. What's his name? Uh, the tall young man. He has a very popular video, you know, trending these days with um, with uh, Davido. Ja Pressure. Oh, yeah, Ja Pressure. Yes. Okay. I was with him which day? I was with him, I think, last week. Or I, there was a, there was a, um, there was an event for African music by Akon. So he was one of the people in the project. Where was this here? In Santa. Or oh, Akon was here? No, Akon wasn't here. There was somebody who was organizing that. I met him. Yes, um, yeah, so that is collaboration. It goes a long way. It opens the markets. It's, you know, it's, it's more value because now if an artist is known in your country, you know, he can get some bookings and come there and make some serious dollars, you know, and, you know, and as well, he reaches out to more people, you know, more fan base. He, you see he on the social media, he's getting more fan base from different parts of the world, different parts of Africa and all of that, you know. So collaboration 
opens up a lot of opportunities, you know. And right now, collaboration has been, there's been more collaboration in the music than, you know, in the movies. George, know? how important is uh, social media in your industry? Social media is a, is a marketing platform which is very, very important to reach people because um, it's a platform that has more people active than the traditional way of going out in the street and sharing flyers and, you know, even trying to heat up people, you know. So social, social media is, almost everybody's on social media right now, you know, so especially the youth, you know, so it's very, very, very important. As a matter of fact, your social media can, can, can define your career. If your social media is dead, nothing is happening. Trust me, people will not even care to book you. They'll think that you're not relevant. It affects you, it affects your playlist on the radio, affects your playlist on the video, affects everything. So, social media is like, it's, without the social media, an artist's career can just disappear. We're talking to George Becker of uh, Geo Beck Entertainment. We're talking entertainment, we're talking music. I'm very anxious to find out what George has learned about life so far when we come back. So George, in winding up the show today, uh, would you be kind enough to share with us what you have learned about life so far? <laughs> I see you smiling. It must be good. <laughs> wow. Uh, what I've learned about life is that you get what you put in. So if you want to get more, you put in more. So you put in more hours into your work, research, and be humble to learn from people and ask questions and um, see how to do it well and um, you will grow. So in terms of my experience, what I've learned about the entertainment industry, know your place. Don't try to struggle to be an artist if you know you're not really that good. You know, have, uh, have like a benchmark to say, okay, this is my standard. This is, I want to be like this person. If you know that you're not, you know, getting any close, just find your place. Maybe you are going to be good behind the scenes, you know. I discovered my place and I went behind the scenes. So now I've been behind a lot of great people. I just recently uh, worked with French Montana, you know. I did a, I did a and r for a song, you know, got my producer to work with him and all of that. That's, that's international and it's coming out. It's going to be so great. So I started from... You know, passion, passion, passion. You know, not all about the money. I was just putting my time, you know. Yes. Sacrificing, you know, putting and learning, you understand? Because the experience you learn from life, you can never buy it from a shop. You know, it's you. You know, you might try something and it doesn't work, but that experience, you can use it in, 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 in any part of your life, you know, in the future. You know, so um, I've learned that, you know, hard work pays off, you know. And, and also, we need to have standards in life. Don't just be a slave, you know, just working and working and working. And you don't have a direction, you don't have, you know, there's no benchmark for you. you just settle and like this, I'm just gonna work. Then you're gonna end up just being a, a workaholic and not having anything to show for it, you know? So that's me. Um, I'm very obsessed with quality. So I look at the most quality when it comes to, if it's music, the music has to be quality, the content has to be quality, the video has to be quality, the presentation, the package, the artist, the everything I do has to be quality. So that's my inspiration, quality, you understand? So I don't know what yours is. So if you have something that you feel like you love, anything is possible. You can be able to reach that height. You can be able to make it. You can be able to, once you put in your time, Trust me, if you're really, really passionate and you're a patient person and you're not all about money, just put in your time, you're going to get there. So that's what I've learned in life. My friends, as you can hear, Geo Beck um, Entertainment is well represented and uh, we wish our friend here, George, uh, the best of the future. If you have anything that you want to know about the entertainment industry in Africa, Kindly write to George, email him at, what's your email address? Um, Joe, I have different emails for different Just clients. give them one, just give one, <laughs> where they can find you. 
for record, you know, if you want me to 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 listen to your demo, you know, uh, you can hit me up on uh, jobeckrecords.gmail. Um, otherwise, you can always catch me on social media. I'm active everywhere, you know, everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Everywhere. You're ev you're everywhere. Yes. Join us next week for another episode of Makamba Life. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>